Hello everyone, this is Bhavik Choksi here and I hope you guys are doing great. In today's video, we would be doing a quick conceptual revision for mergers and acquisitions. It is an important chapter, a tier 1 category and a scoring one as well. So let us get started. Initially, there is some basic theory about mergers on what are the various types of mergers like horizontal between two competitors, vertical between uh, uh, suppliers and uh, let us say entities or customers in the supply chain. Conglomerate where you are trying to acquire someone in a completely different business or a reverse merger where let us say a smaller company is acquiring a bigger company. The more important part is the numerical part and in this numerical part in a lot of questions you are asked to calculate the post merger EPS. This post merger EPS can subsequently be used for the purpose of calculating post merger market price, for the purpose of post merger market cap, for the purpose of uh, uh, analysis of the impact, etc. But how do you calculate post merger market price? How do you calculate post merger EPS? Well, post merger EPS is the post merger earnings, which is going to be nothing but the total of the two pre merger earnings. So, if the uh, acquirer has an earnings of 100 total, target as an earnings of 50, then your total earnings post acquisition should ideally be 150. However, there can be synergic benefits like over here, there may be certain cost savings and the synergy benefits, let's say maybe in today's terms, 20 rupees, in which case post merger, my total earnings would be 170, that is 100 plus 50 plus 20 rupees for synergy in today's terms. In which case, you will divide this by the post merger number of shares, which will include the pre merger number of shares with the acquirer plus the shares issued as a part of acquisition, which is usually the shares of the target pre-merger into the exchange ratio. So this will give you the post-merger EPS and this post-merger EPS can be used for the purpose of calculating post-merger market price. Now, how do you calculate the post-merger market price? Well, if there is no specific information, we can assume that the PE ratio of the acquirer remains the same, which is a reasonable assumption to make. So, for example, if I'm a company like DMART, which is a successful retail company and I'm acquiring a relatively smaller retail business, in which case the new company that is getting acquired is going to get the benefit of the goodwill, the brand name, the processes that DMART has. And as a result, the companies which was, let us say, the old company had a 50 rupees earnings. Now that 50 rupees was earlier getting multiplied by let us say 10 times PE ratio. Now it will get multiplied by DMART's PE ratio, which I mean it's much more, but let us say hypothetically it is 15. And hence over here there will be benefits on the merger when a high PE company acquires a low PE company. In which case the PE ratio is assumed to remain constant and whatever is your post merger EPS is going to be multiplied by the post merger PE ratio which is same as the pre merger PE ratio of the acquirer. So your post merger EPS into the PE ratio of the acquirer will give you the post merger market price. However, if there are fairly big acquisitions like let's say Sun Pharma acquiring Renbexi or and so on, in which case if these are big acquisitions, in some, I mean the shareholders would not really say that the PE of the acquirer continues. Well, you will have to consider both the PE ratios, in which case you will try to calculate the weighted average PE, where you will take total earnings as a weights. So, you will have the PE ratio of Sun Pharma into the total earnings of Sun Pharma and the PE ratio of Renbaxi into the total earnings of Renbaxi and try to find the weighted average. That will give you the weighted average P. In this case, there is really no benefit in the merger unless there are synergies. So, merely because uh, uh, a company is acquiring another company, there is no benefit if the PE ratio is just to weighted average. And in the last and conceptually and theoretically the best way to calculate would be to actually find the value of a company after merger, not by assuming a PE ratio remains same, not by assuming that the PE ratio adjusts to weighted average, but by looking at various growth rates. So for example, there are certain questions where you would be given growth rate of the target pre the acquisition and you would be told that this growth rate changes post acquisition under the fold of the acquirer, in which case you will try to find the existing KE of the target and using that existing KE and the revised growth rates, you will try to find the revised value of the target, the intrinsic value of the target. And the total market cap will be the pre-merger market cap of the acquirer plus the intrinsic value, the revised value of the target under the fold of the acquirer divided by the post-merger number of shares. I would rate this to be the best method. So, which method should you use? If the question specifically gives you data about growth rates, you will try to find the value of the target under the revised growth rate as the first preference. If data about growth rates are not given, 
and you have been asked to calculate the post merger market price then you will assume that the p ratio of the acquirer remains the same and calculate that is what the institute usually does however the question specifically tells you that the p ratio is just to weighted average or so in which case you will use the method of the weighted average p so this is the preference that you generally follow now how do you calculate exchange ratios and what are the types about uh, of questions involving exchange ratios exchange ratios would compare two parameters of the acquirer and the target so for example one of the most important parameter is a market price so over here market price higher the better so if the target has a market price of 100 acquirer has a market price of 50 and there's a swap that is an exchange in which case the target shareholders will say well you know what my share is worth 100 your share is worth 50 you're giving me your shares which are worth 50 you have to give me two shares and hence the ratio will be the market price of the target divided by the market price of the acquirer which is 100 divided by 50 that is 2 is to 1 which is interpreted as for every one share of the target you will get two shares of the acquirer the same rationale can apply for other favorable financial ratios like eps what do you mean by favorable higher the better book value per share higher the better all of these ratios you will say target upon acquirer so you'll have the eps of the target upon eps of the acquirer and the number that you see is interpreted as for every one share of the target how many shares of the acquirer this will work for favorable financial ratios however if there are adverse financial ratios for example nps non-performing assets in which case if let us say the target has an np of 20 percent whereas the acquirer has an np of only five percent in which case if you do target by acquirer that will be 20 percent upon five percent your ratio will be four is to one and hence you would say that for every one share of the target you get four shares of the acquirer that is wrongly rewarding the target for getting more NPS. Well, you were earlier rewarding the target because they had a higher market price, fair, higher EPS, fair, higher book value per share, fair. But for NPS, it's lower the better. And as a result, the ratio will be inverted. That is, you would take the NP of the acquirer, that is 5% upon NP of the target, that is 20%, and you'll get 0.25 to 1, which makes complete sense. The acquirer is a more superior company, target is an inferior company because it has a higher NPA, and hence for every one share of the target, you'll get only 0.25 shares of the acquirer. In certain questions, they might also ask you to calculate what is called as a weighted average swap ratio, in which case they will give you various parameters like uh, NPAs, EPS, book value per share, even capital adequacy, and then give you weights. In which case, you'll have to find a weighted average, and that weighted average will be the ratio that is agreed. Okay. Next, in certain questions, you might be asked to calculate premium. In case of a cash acquisition, premium is the excess that you pay for the target's business. In case of a cash acquisition, that is the total cash paid minus the pre merger market value of the target. But in case of a share swap, that will be the value of the shares issued to the shareholders of the target minus the pre-merger market cap. Now, this value of the shares is the post-merger market price. This post-merger market price, as we have discussed earlier, can be calculated based on the growth rates, based on uh, the P ratio, etc. But it is the post-merger market price of the, uh, of the shares that the target shareholders get into the number of shares that they get minus the pre-merger market cap of the target. Market cap, remember, is calculated as a market price into the number of shares. Then there, there are certain questions where there's a linkage between valuation and mergers where you have to calculate the maximum purchase price. This is usually calculated using the discounted cash flow method, the DCF technique. So under the discounted cash flow method, if you have to find uh, the maximum purchase price, you will try to find the present value of all the future cash flows that you are going to get post the acquisition. Now, which all cash flows are we going to take? Well, if I acquire a majority stake, in which case I will take the present value of all the future free cash flows, not just dividends. Remember, dividends is considered to be a very good measure to value a company where you are acquiring a minority stake what we did in valuation when I'm acquiring a minority stake well whatever dividend I receive I'll have to sit with that however if I acquire a majority stake then dividend is discretionary free cash flow measures the amount that is freely available to be distributed as dividend and hence the valuation in case of a majority stake has to be based on the free cash flows or the amount which is freely available to be distributed as dividend. However, these are cash flows. Beyond that, there may be certain cost savings or synergies and the present value of these cost savings or synergies will also be considered and there may also be some unrequired assets which you can sell where the present value of those sale proceeds can be added or a liability which you have to meet in which case the value of the liability to be met has to be subtracted after that the value that you get is the maximum purchase price for the business you will have to see whether it is for the enterprise or whether it is for equity but that will give you the maximum purchase price Achha. 
Next, we have certain alternative valuation methods over here, like comparable company analysis. Very easy, where you will take a comparable company. Like, for example, if you're a retail business, you might take a comparable company like DMART or Shopperstop. Try to find their PE ratios. You are unlisted, so you don't have a market price, you don't have a P ratio, but you have an EPS. So if you want to value your company's share, you will take your company's EPS and multiply it by the P ratio of your comparable companies. This can apply for other ratios as well, like enterprise value by sales, enterprise value by EBIT or price to earnings. There can also be precedent transaction analysis where you don't have a comparable company which is listed. However, a comparable merger transaction that has recently happened. In which case, you look at the price that was paid under the merger transaction divided by the earnings per share of that company and that is the multiple someone else paid for an acquisition. Well, if there's a merger and acquisition of our company, that should also be the multiple that should be taken for us. And lastly, the sum of the parts approach, also called as the chop shop approach, where there may be multi-divisional companies like Mahindra, in which case you might not have a single direct comparable company. In which case, what will we do? We will try to value each of the divisions separately. You will find the value of the Mahindra's software division, Mahindra's hospitality division, Mahindra's automobile division by comparing it with, with pure play forms like Sterling Resorts for hospitality, like let us say Infosys for software, like let us say uh, 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 Tata Motors for let us say or Maruti for automobiles and you will try to find the value for each division, the total of all divisions will be the total value of Mahindra. So these are some alternative valuation methods. The study material also includes a very scoring topic called as EVA economic value added within the larger fold of mergers. Now, to be honest, it has no direct connection with mergers, but it is there in mergers uh, in some of uh, uh, some of uh, 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 the additions, in which case we can quickly discuss it over here as well. Economic value added is a formula which is actually a patented uh, formula by one of, uh, I think, Stern management or so uh, of the US, where they've given various adjustments. We don't have to study all the adjustments, but what is the idea over here? EVA or economic value added is calculated as no pad, that is net operating profit after tax, minus the invested capital into the weighted average cost of capital. This is like super profit that you calculate in economics like you have earned profit that is no pad however what about the opportunity cost what about the required rate of return the real profit is the profit over and above that so if i've invested one crore rupees and on an average if i put that somewhere else as well i can get 10 percent and 10 lakh rupees i would have in any case earned in my current business i've earned 12 lakh rupees and hence 2 lakhs is my economic profit though my accounting profit might might appear as 12 lakhs so how do you calculate no pad no pad is calculated either as ebit into 1 minus t or your PAT plus interest into 1 minus T. In either case, you are going to get the same answer. In certain cases for no PAT, you might have to do adjustment for items like provision for bad debts, etc. If the question mentions. Second is invested capital. Invested capital comprises of debt as well as equity borrowed funds as well as own funds and reserves, which is usually as per the books. Sometimes there may be unrecorded assets. These unrecorded assets will also be considered because they will help in contributing earnings. So you will take the total invested capital. Since you are taking debt and equity both, you will have to take the required rate of return also for debt and equity both. And hence you will take weighted average cost of capital, WACC, which is typically using book value weights because you are currently looking at the balance sheet. And hence, if the economic value added or EVA comes to be positive, it is good for the company. If it comes to be negative, then value is not created. Similar to EVA, there's a concept of MVA, market value added, where you will compare the market value of equity, for example, with the net worth or book values of uh, share capital and reserves. If there's a higher value, uh, we will uh, say that there is an MVA. EVA is for the year, MVA is as on date. The WSCC can be calculated by taking the cost of debt as interest into 1 minus T and the cost of equity can be using CAPM or Gordon's formula. The weights will typically be book value weights. So uh, that kind of takes care with the basic discussion. Just a quick brush up about mergers and acquisitions uh, concepts. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. And I'll see you soon with some other video. If you have any comments, please do share in the comment section below. Let me know your feedback and I'll be happy to kind of address any specific requirements that you have. Thank you very much. Good luck. Bye-bye. Take care.